Many times it happens that you're building an app or you already have an existing application and you want to add a little bit of AI functionality to it. For example, an AI assistant or a chat bot or a recommendation engine. And you don't want to go ahead and integrate OpenAI because integrating OpenAI can take a little bit of effort sometimes and also it's expensive. So uh, what you might want to do is you, want to, you might want to have a small scale uh, open source large language model. Uh, which is not as powerful and as potent as OpenAI, but also you probably don't need uh, that much of AI functionality. You maybe need something really small and especially you don't want to share your data with OpenAI, right? That's a big, big concern for many companies. So if you want something small, something very quick and light, doesn't take a lot of uh, like processing requirements, then you might want to check out this uh, AI model called uh, or LLM called Dolly. 3B. That's the one that we are going to be discussing today. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how to create a very small project with Dolly 3B. So we'll be using Google Colab. Uh, I already have a video existing about Google Colab. So do check it out if you don't know how the interface works. So we'll be using Google Colab. We'll import Dolly 3B from Hugging Face and we'll build a pipeline where we'll actually um, uh, you know, send it a prompt and get some text response back from Dolly 3B. Okay, so the one that we're using specifically is the Dolly 3B version 2. Now I'll take you to Hugging Face website and we'll go through some of the uh, details about this particular LLM and what it does, its limitations, and then we'll actually start coding. Now there are many more open source large language models that are much bigger than this. For example, there is Llama, there is Zephyr, there is um, Falcon, and I'll be showing you each of these one by one and their use cases where you might want to use them. So let's get started. So like I mentioned, today's video is about Dolly 3B version 2. In the future, in the upcoming videos, we'll tackle on more LLMs, for example, the Zephyr 7B Beta, the Llama, Falcon and so on. So let's get started. So this is the Hugging Face website for Dolly 3B version 2 and it's giving you all the information. So it's by Databricks, the very famous company and uh, they also have two more in this family. So Dolly is a family of LLMs, right? Just like Falcon, just like Llama, and there are multiple models uh, with different uh, parameter sizes. So this, uh, ours is a 3 billion parameter size. That's why it's called 3B. Then we have 12B and 7B as well. Now, the thing is, the bigger the AI model, uh, it, the, the better it can be for many tasks. But the thing is, it takes longer for, for us to download it and longer for us to get back the results. And also it takes up more processing power. So it depends on the use case. Today, you're talking about a very small use case, for example, an app which already uh, is, is working fine, but also requires a little bit of AI support. So uh, the 3B, Dolly 3B is perfectly fine for that. Now, there are limitations uh, on for all models. So it's best when you are downloading a model, go through the limitations as well. It says this is not a state-of-the-art generative language model and uh, benchmarking is ongoing. It's not designed to perform competitively in the sense uh, what it's trying to say is don't try to compete with <laughs> don't try to compete with open AI using Dolly 3B because it's not meant to do that but it's it's really good for like really small uh, pro, uh, problems right uh, like small text prompts and all of that stuff and it's saying it struggles with uh, very complex prompts and programming problems obviously that's not our use case mathematical operations we don't want to do that dates and times open ended question answering right hallucination so it's it's uh, struggling with a lot of things but like I said, for very small, simple use cases, it's perfectly all right, not a problem. So what I, what I have for you today is, is a small project uh, and we're using Google Colab. Now, I've already made a video about Google Colab uh, in case you haven't checked it out. And if, in case you don't know how Google Colab works, you might want to check it out. Uh, I've given you a complete walk around in Google Colab showing all the features. And this basically helps us write better Python programs and gives us a space in the cloud to run our AI models. Now, I'm connected to the T4. Um, computer space, uh, the, the T4 GPU on the cloud, the for, from Google Cloud. And what I'll be doing is I'll take you through every single line of code because I understand that my audience from my channel are very Golang, Rust, system design and te uh, technology architecture focused. I have not really covered a lot of Python and a lot of uh, AI LLM uh, in the past. And uh, the only reason I'm covering it because is because I, in, in my company, Armor, we've started using a lot of uh, LLMs like different types of open source LLMs. We fine tune them and we use them for different use cases. So uh, it's just that the use cases are increasing so much and you can do so many things with LLMs. So I want to cover all of these LLMs so that you guys can also learn from this. And in your existing Golang Rust applications, you'll be able to just 
uh, uses. So this part, the, the AI part, we'll do it in, let's say, uh, with, with Python, start of a server, but then the consumption part and all of the actual business logic we can build on Golang and Rust as well, right? So that kind of architecture works perfectly fine. I do it all the time in my company. So yeah, so there's no harm in uh, building the AI part in Python because it's just much faster uh, anyways. So uh, let's go line by line. So the first thing is I'm installing, let me zoom in further in case uh, the, the text is not clear. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm installing transformers, then I'm installing sentence piece, then installing accelerate. All the, all the only thing you have to do with, um, with Google Colab is the link of this file will be there in the description of this video. You just have to click on the link and create your own copy of this Google Colab and you can just run these cells. So you, all you have to do is just click on this and run these cells. So this is cell number one, for example, it's installing all these libraries one by one. And then the next thing is there's another cell uh, and then you just have to, after this cell has, has stopped running, you'll get a tick sign out here on the top. So now it's on the third line as you can see and now you get in 16 seconds, you get like a tick sign saying that this has uh, finished execution and then you run the second cell, okay, one by one. Because they have dependence on each other, so make sure you don't just go and run the last one, you gotta run uh, all of these sequentially. So it's important line by line. Now let me explain to you what's what's happening here. Okay, so firstly the dependencies. Now I have prepared a nice little whimsical board for you guys to explain everything to you. So the first thing we import is transformers. Now transformers is a library by Hugging Face. It provides a simple interface to work with with a, with a wide range of pre-trained language models. Now Dolly 3B version 2 is something called as a pre-trained language model. In a sense, what they've done is they've taken a little language model and they've uh, tra trained it with a lot of um, data. Like Databricks has created data sets, they've trained it with data sets. So it's called as a pre-trained language models mo model. So we'll be using transformers to load this, to load Dolly 3B and interact with it. Okay, that's the, uh, that's the problem statement today. What we're building today on, on Google Colab is we're building a chatbot that talks like a pirate, right? So pirate, pirates have like a typical language that you might have seen in movies like Pirates of the Caribbean. And we'll be just asking the chatbot to act like a pirate and we'll be asking it questions. And it just, it, it uh, or, or is it, or is it the other way around? Let me, let me check. Okay. Yeah. So no. So today we're not doing the pirate uh, problem. We're doing the physicist problem. So we're asking it to be a physicist actually. Okay. And in the, in the Zephyr 7b beta, which is the next video that I'll create, we'll do the whole uh, pirate uh, problem. Okay. So these are just ways by which you can test uh, an LLM. So one is like you ask it to act as a physicist. So in this video, we'll ask, ask the LLM to ask, uh, to act as a physicist, and then it'll give us a response. And in the next video, which is with the other LLM, like I said, we'll use the pirate problem. Okay, so uh, anyway, so that's your transformers. Then we are importing in the in the code. If you if you go here on top, you'll see we we're in, uh, importing something called as sentence piece and then accelerator. So I've, in, I've uh, told you about transformers already. Let's talk about sentence piece and accelerate. Okay, so sentence piece. Now it's very clear we're working. We're going to be working with text prompts and responses. So we'll send it a text text, uh, text prompt saying that uh, you are a physicist and uh, please give me the answer for this. So that's a text prompt and it's going to give you a text response. Now to work with that, you need something for tokenization. Tokenization, as you know, you take a sentence, you divide it into small, uh, into words, individual words. That is the whole process is called as tokenization. And uh, it's uh, this library sentence piece is used for tokenization, particularly for tasks related to training and using sequence to sequence models like transformers. In our case, we're using transformers, as you know, to work with Dolly 3B. So this provides an efficient and language independent text tokenization algorithm. So this is uh, language independent in the sense could be with uh, English, could be with Spanish, could be with Russian, doesn't matter, it's language independent and it will help you with text tokenizing. Okay. Now you have the third thing you have is Accelerate. So this again is developed by Hugging Face and it's designed to optimize the training and inference performance of machine learning models, particularly on GPUs. Now, as you know, we're using the T4 GPU, so it's just, Accelerate is just going to help us increase the performance. Uh, then we have, we're importing Torch and we're importing OS, okay? So for Torch and OS, Torch basically is going to be used to handle tensor operations and potentially manage the device, CPU or GPU on which the competitions will take place. CPU, uh, so Torch is a very common uh, library 
And then we have the pipeline module. So if you go here, you, you see that we are importing pipeline from transformers. Now we already installed transformers on top and now we are importing uh, pipeline from transformers. So what does pipeline help us to do? Pipeline basically is, uh, is allowing us to quickly set up pipelines for common NLP tasks. Now, every time you create, you, you give a task to the LLM and you get back the response that is called as creating a pipeline. Okay, so text generation is, uh, is, it, is, a, is an example of the kind of task that we will give it, give to the pipeline and text classification is another task. In our case today, we are working with text generation. All right. So we, uh, you see a tick here, that means this we have, we're done with running this. And the next uh, set of code we're running is loading the model. So we are creating the pipeline. So we talked about creating a pipeline. So now here, finally, we're creating a pipeline. The pipeline, the model name is Databricks slash Dolly uh, V23B. Okay, so uh, Transformers is helping us work with this model, but uh, and we, the link of this model is Databricks slash Dolly version 23B. And then we have these three lines, which is torch D type torch dot B float 16, trust remote code is equal to true and device map auto. So what does this mean? Let's talk about that. So torch D type uh, is equal to torch B float 16. So B float 16 is brain floating point 16, which is a floating point format that provides more precision than 16 bit half precision floating point formats. Uh, this means that it's, it's often used to speed up computations on hardware. So uh, what you're saying is, because we want faster responses from Dolly 3B, we're using this to help us uh, accelerate and, and speed up computations on hardware. Then we have Trust Remote Code Truth. Now this is very similar to what you get in VS Code. When you start up VS Code these days, it asks you, do you trust, do you trust this author? It's the same thing. So it's saying, uh, do, you, do you trust the remote location code execution? Because we are downloading the um, the Dolly 3B, so it says yes, uh, we're setting it true. Uh, so, and the third is trust, rem yeah, it's the same thing, but this one should have been the third thing actually, which is device map equal to auto. So I'll just copy and paste that here. Device map equal to auto. And this parameter specifies the device, which is CPU or GPU. Uh, to be used for computation. In our case, we're using the GPU, as you know, on uh, on top, on top right uh, that I showed you. When it's set to auto, the pipeline automatically selects the appropriate device based on the availability. So if the GPU is available, it'll it'll select the GPU. If it's not available, it'll just use the CPU or the best possible CPU. So this allows the pipeline to take advantage of GPU acceleration if a GPU is available, which can significantly speed up computation. So a lot of stuff you're doing, like this one, this one, it's it's all only being done to speed up and even accelerate it's only being done to speed up computations so that we get the response back early from dolly 3b now let's see what's happening here so we have loaded the model uh, we have created our pipeline and now we create our helper functions so the helper function is setting the context first so it says you are an expert physicist you are good at explaining physics concepts in simple words help as much as you can that's the context that we are setting and that's uh, and we're printing that out obviously uh, and then we have the response okay the response comes from dolly pipeline we send it the prompt and we uh, give it the max number of tokens to be utilized now max tokens basically means that you don't want an answer of more than 500 words because if we don't give it a, a, a restriction it will generate maybe 2000 word response we don't want that obviously because that ends up eating up our computation resources, it also takes up a lot of time. And what you want to return from here is the dolly response, the first response, which is at the zeroth index, and the generated text from the response is what we'll be returning. So this is the prompt, explain the difference between nuclear fusion and fusion, uh, and this is our prompt. And, uh, and we have to now run this because we're setting the prompt here, and then we'll print, get, uh, we'll print this, get completion dolly, which is the function response from the function. So the function takes in the input, which is the prompt in our case, and the prompt basically uh, is equal to this, which is the system message plus the prompt that we're getting from the user. Right? So explain the difference between nuclear fusion and fusion, and we get the response. Nuclear fusion and fusion both give off energy while fusion occurred, blah, 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 blah. Right, so it's giving us a complete response from the um, Dolly 3B and it's acting as a physicist. So this was the complete project.
Now I hope you learned something new in today's video and I've tried to explain everything line by line but in case there's something you didn't understand from today's video please let me know in the comments below so that I know what to focus on and I have like clear feedback from you guys. Now before I, I wrap this up just want to tell you that I'm creating this uh, playlist called the AI projects and I'm, I'll be adding all the AI projects that I'm creating these days to this playlist. In addition to this if you're new to this channel there's a 50 Rust project playlist in case you want to learn Rust, all of them in the increasing level of difficulty. Then I have a 53 killer Golang project series where all the Golang projects are in an increasing level of difficulty. You will become an advanced Golang developer after, after you've done all of these. Then there's a technology architect course on my channel and there is the ultimate system design course on my channel. Which now this one is not complete and this one is not complete. I still keep adding videos to it as, as I get time. These require a lot of resources from my end in terms of planning resources, but I'll be adding more to it. So don't worry. So make sure in case you want to learn any of these concepts to check these out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, do subscribe so that you come to know when awesome content like this comes out. It's all for free, of course. And in the next video, we'll check out the Zephyr uh, 7B uh, LM.